Section 10.3, example two. So suppose you're in a drug trial and you're investigating whether a side effect of the drug is increased heart rate. And so we have a table below. So within our group, we had, it looks like we had 105 people. It looks like we had 50 people take the drug, 55 people take the placebo. And then we just recorded if their heart rate was increased or not. And that will help us figure out if it's a side effect. So if it's a side effect, that means it's dependent. So this is talking about an effect is the chi-square independence test. Notice we have two variables again. We have drug placebo versus heart rate. So we're in the two variable world as well. And our HO will always be the independence. So heart rate is independent of the drug, meaning the drug is, has no effect on heart rate or heart rate is dependent of the drug treatment, so there is an effect. So this is how we can check if like a drug um, causes any side effects. And we'd have to look at a sample, right? Is this how close is the sample to the independent numbers or not? Is it just a little bit different or is it a lot different? Um, so we're gonna do 5% significance and then we'll start talking about that formula. So for step three, we're gonna do this on the table above. So let's find those expected values. So we're gonna do row times column all over total. So my first one will be 50 times 66 over 105. My second one will then be, I'm gonna to go to the right, so right here, we'll do 50 times 39 over 105. So I'll let you calculate these without me. So then bottom left, we'll get 55 times 66 over 105. And then our final one will be 55 times 39 over 105. So current row, current column over total. So why don't you calculate each of those, pause the video and come back. I'm just gonna share the numbers with you. So hopefully you got the numbers. Um, so I got for 55 times 66 over 105, I got 31.43. So if there's no effect, if the heart rate is not an effect or side effect, then we should have had about 31 people in the drug group who just happened to have their heart rate increased. Um, but we had 36, so it's a tiny bit different. And if there's no effect, the no heart rate and drug group should have had 18.57, which was 50 times 39 over 105. So again, it's a little bit different, but maybe this is just random. Um, for bottom left, I get 34.57, so placebo and increased heart rate. And then bottom right, no heart rate increase in placebo, we get 20.43. So these are the numbers that if heart rate isn't a side effect, these are the numbers we should have gotten, right? Because some people, their heart rate's just going to go up no matter what. Um, but it should be about the same for the placebo and the drug group. So let's go ahead and find our chi-square values. So we're gonna do observed, which is the top number, and expected is the bottom number. We're gonna subtract, square, and divide. So I'm just gonna to go top left over, and then go to the bottom row. So the top left, we get 36 minus 31.43 squared all over 31.43. This is the tedious step, and we get 0.664. Um, we'll go over to the right. We get 14 minus 18.57 squared divided by 18.57. And I get 1.125. And then I just wrote the chi-square sum kind of in the same as the table. So 1, 2, 1, 2, lined up with the table. 
I think that helps me organize the work. You don't have to think this, but I do. Um, so then we'll go to the bottom row. We get 30 minus 34.57, and we'll square it. Divide by 34.57. And we get 0 0.604. And then finally, bottom right will be 25 minus 20.43 squared divided by 20.43. So our final little mini z score is 1.022. And so none of these are that different, right? These are all pretty small z-scores. So maybe it's just random that some people had increased heart rate and it's unrelated to the drug. Um, let's go ahead and find the total. So add those four numbers up. That'll be our chi-square value. So I got a chi-square of 3.415. All right, so let's go ahead. Final steps get faster. That's the worst step. So we're gonna find the p-value. We're on a right skewed pi-square curve. So no tail. Um, degrees of freedom is categories minus one, categories minus one. So two minus one times two minus one. So it's actually just one here. One times one. So our peak is around one and we're gonna shade past 3.415, wherever that is, just approximate. So our p-value is chi-square CDF, lower is 3.415 up to infinity. It's a right tail test and degrees of freedom is one. Let's see what we get. Oops. So we get point, a p-value of 0 0.0646, which is small, but it's a little bit higher than we wanted. We decided that 05 was the most risk we take, so it's too risky. It's past that 0 0.05, so we do not reject. So we're saying there's a chance that there is no effect. So there's not enough evidence to show that there is an effect. So there is not enough evidence. It's a little weird, right? Because small numbers or small p-values are strong. Um, but think about p-values as really measuring risk. So that's why small is strong evidence. So since this is too risky, there's not enough evidence at 5% to show heart rate is a side effect or independent or dependent, whatever word you want to use. A heart rate is a side effect. I like side effect better than dependent because it's a little bit more of an everyday word. Of the drug. So we can't say that the drug was causing people's heart rate to go up. It wasn't different enough to prove that. And it could be also that our sample size is really small. We only have 105 people, so we could get more people and try this again, especially with our risk being so close to 0.05. Um, yeah, but that's the independence test. So the independence test is useful when we're looking at things independent or dependent, and it'll usually be in a two-way table because we have to have two variables to do this test.